I'm Axel Bob George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now this is a new week and this is the last week of the month of September. Woo! The year is running. Praise God. Now that's the same way God's great blessings containing his thoughts are running towards you. Don't start looking at everything and say, wow, what have I accomplished? Uh -uh, uh -uh. Look to your own compass. See, sometimes we measure our lives with the lives of others. And the Bible says people who do that, comparing themselves with themselves, they are not wise. Compare yourself with God's plan for your life. How far have you gone? So, but I don't know God's plan for my life. See, that's where the problem begins. You need to calm down and know it. I always tell people this. That's part of the easiest things to find out. God's plan and purpose for your life. Why would you think God will have a purpose or plan for your life and be hiding it from you? What kind of game is that? You, if you have children, won't you spell out your thoughts concerning them? Would you be hiding it? So why then do you think God will be hiding his plan? Say, I've been praying. I don't know. You know, sometimes it's hard to know God's plan for your life. No, I don't think it's hard to know. I think you are the one trying to get a plan to God. And that's what is hard to do. You're trying to get God to accept your plan. But if you want to accept God's plan, then guess this is all you just need to do. Yield to him. Yield to him. And then you learn to pray this prayer. Lord, if there is anything that you want me to do, just show me and I will do it. Now, when I say pray that prayer, those guys can't say I pray that prayer three times. No, it's an attitude of mind. It's a mindset. And that's when you know something has become a prayer. When it has become your mindset. Praise God. Now, I'm just introducing the, the week and the things we're going to be talking about this week. We're still talking about the manifestation of eternal life but before we go further can we make requests for our daily bread now this is the last week of the month you should be expecting a lot of good things praise god so join your faith with me now and say father i make a demand right now from you for my daily bread i receive all of it even as you have given it to me in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Now you see, God has opened up his plan for you. And if you just yield yourself to walk in, in that plan, and sometimes people want to just say, oh, God should show me the plan. They, they want to see the end from the beginning. Now, it's not in all cases you're going to see the end from the beginning. Sometimes God can actually show you. Because Jesus said one of the things the Holy Spirit is going to do in our lives is to show us things to come. But then also, you see, first and foremost, you must understand the character of God. The character of God is expressed in his word, like what we call the Bible. The character of God is expressed now. When you study and understand it, you will understand him. You see that? And there are many witnesses. Now, the Bible is also a book of witnesses. There are many witnesses that have gone for that. When you begin to study these witnesses, you begin to form an idea of the character of God because you're going to find consistency. It is in consistency that we find character. Now, so when you begin to seek, find consistency in God, one of the things is going to help you build in your own life is your own consistency. A lot of people are not being able to flow in God's plan for their life because they are not consistent. People come to God to do something for them. And, and someone say, oh, they say the gospel is going to change my life. Okay, I'm waiting to see that event that will happen, that will bring a change in my life. That's not how it works. You find the word of God. The word of God is truth. And you begin to live your life in truth for the rest of your life. You are not living your life from one event to the other. That's the reason a lot of people backslide. That's the reason a lot of people change churches. 
Because you say, ah, I've been in this church for three years and I've not seen what I'm looking for. What are you looking for? So I'm going to the other church. Meanwhile, I came from another church. I didn't find what I was looking for there. I came here. What are you looking for? Certainly not God. Because the truth is this, you will never find God like you were thinking in a particular church. You will never find him. Now, that's the mistake a lot of people make. They are looking for, oh, I heard that church, they can pray very well. Let me go there. Now, there's nothing wrong in joining people who will inspire you to pray. But there's everything wrong if you think by being a member in that place, you are going to get what you're looking for in terms of your life changing. Then you're in trouble. Because the truth is, no matter the results you see, as long as you think it is connected to a particular place, and not God himself, then you're, 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 you're doing it wrong and you're going to end up disappointed. That's the truth. But when you know it comes from God, oh, you can get inspired by anyone, but you know your dealings is with the Lord. It will give you some great measure of consistency. And when that consistency is in your life, then you're dealing with character. Praise God. Now, turn your Bibles with me to Deuteronomy chapter 8. I think somebody just needed to hear that. Be consistent. Be consistent. And you'll see all the changes that God wants you. Sometimes, I know the pressure of life can put you off track. But refuse it. Those are the things you've got to refuse. Refuse. When he says, resist the devil and he will flee. Those are the things. See, you're not looking for one man with a very dark face and horns coming to you. No, when life throws challenges at you and then you begin to hear the voice of the devil. Then you look, how long have you been in this thing? Is it working? It's not working. My friend, just go and look for something else to do with your life. Now that's the devil speaking to you. What do you do? Resist him. They turn on me chapter 8 from verse 1. I'm going to be showing you something from today. And I would trust the Lord to help us um, expound on it this week. We're dealing with the manifestation of eternal life. Now watch this, verse 1. Every commandment, I'm reading from the New King James. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go into the Go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. Watch this now. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. Now take notes. He said you shall remember this. That God, who is the Lord, led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. To humble you and test you. To know what is in your heart, whether you will keep his commandment or not. It says all these 40 years, God was checking you out to see if you will keep his commandment or not. Now watch this. Wonderful. Verse 3. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger. Oh, King Jesus, he suffered you to hunger. That actually means he made you to be hungry. Meaning they could have been, they could have lived those 40 years without eating food and they would have survived. Mm -hmm. Say, how? Supernaturally, of course. Because they were under a cloud. All right. But he said, now watch this. I want you to follow this carefully. He says, so he humbled you allowed you to hunger and fed you with manner which you did not know nor did your fathers know now you see when he allowed you to be hungry he didn't let you go look for food yourself when he allowed you to be hungry in that wilderness he now gave you now that you were hungry you cried out for food he now gave you food that your fathers did not know food that you have never seen before guess where this thought is going Moses is sharing with them. So, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know. The reason he gave them manna is that he might make you know. 
that man shall not live by bread alone, but by but man, follow this now, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Did you see that? He said, God did all this, got you hungry, then fed you with food that you didn't know. He was referring to the manna, what we call manna. He said, the reason he did that is so that you will come to know and understand that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Now, I want you to follow me carefully. There are things we're going to open up this week, I'm telling you. So God intended from the beginning, yeah, that man should live by every word that proceeds from his mouth. That was God's intention from the beginning. That was the life wire of man's existence. Words proceeding from the mouth of God. I told you, thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. You remember in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says, in the cool of the day, the voice of God kept walk, came walking in the garden. Did he, did he, have you read that before? Oh, check it in Genesis chapter 3. So the voice of God came walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Hey, guess what? The cool of the day was meal time for them. What are you saying? Are you saying we're not supposed to eat food at all? No. He didn't say man shall not live by bread. He said man shall not live by bread alone. So you eat bread, but there is something important that will give you life. And what is that? The words proceeding from the mouth of God. That that's how man was made to exist. So the voice of God comes walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That's when man was supposed to receive his daily dose of life. Now, you remember God have told them of every tree in the garden, you may freely eat. So God permitted them to eat physical food. You understand what I'm saying? But then also, particularly, God always sent his word to them. Now, Adam and Eve were living that way for only God knows how long until they sinned. Now, when they sinned, you remember God said to them, the day you disobey me, you will surely die. Now, I told you this, this sometime, some, like last week or two weeks ago, I told you that when they ate the food, they didn't drop dead. You see, people were waiting for them, but they didn't drop dead. Now, no, God was referring to there is going to be a disconnect. They are, they are going to stop receiving those words that they used to receive every call of the day. And that's where death starts from. But I want you to follow me now. Man, as he intended, as God intended, he said it here. This is not something new that he was trying to introduce. This is something that I've been in existence. Now he's trying to bring his people. Now this is God taking the whole of Israel as a nation, as, as, as a test case. So he took his whole nation and said, look, let me walk with these people. And so he, he took them out of Egypt, led them into the wilderness. And the first thing he wanted to do is to read their heart of every wrong thing and prove what was really in their heart. So he, he led them into the wilderness. He was waiting and said, Let, they, they're going to get hungry. And when they got hungry, he fed them with food they did not know. Letting them realize that, come, even though we were not in Egypt or Goshen, we received supplies here in the world. How did this supply come? Nobody can explain. Actually, the word manna means what is this? So it's not a food that they know about. But it was supplied to them. The whole nation was supplied. 
the whole nation. It wasn't one man supplying it and trying to give to those and not, not give to some. Everybody was well supplied. They ate to their food. So no one lacked food in that wilderness. Though they were in the wilderness, God supplied. And God was trying to communicate something to them. Was God communicating? You will live by every word that proceeds from my mouth. You are not planned. God did not plan for you to live your life in any other way from paycheck to paycheck. No, no. No, it's good to have a paycheck. But beyond that, your life, what gives you sustenance is every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. No wonder the Bible tells us in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. In verse 14, John chapter 1, it says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That word dwelled among us. And hey, this one who is called the word is the same one that came to give us life. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance. This was the original plan that God had for man in the garden of Eden. You remember Adam lived so long. He lived 900 and something years. Why? Because he was receiving the word of God. He was sustained by the word of God. And what God had in mind then is still what God has in mind now. Nothing has changed. Praise God. Nothing has changed. Now, the only thing that has happened right now is that we have more understanding and revelation of what God was trying to do with Adam. So Jesus, who is the word of God made flesh, said, I am come to give you life. That anyone who believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How do you believe in him? If you believe in him, you will pay attention to his voice. You will pay attention to his words. Paying attention to his words is what produces life. And the life we're talking about is eternal life. His word coming to you and you receiving that word is what gives you life. I'll show you something. John chapter 16. Thank you, Holy Spirit. John 16. Verse 28. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 28, John chapter 16, Jesus speaking and says, I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. What was he talking about? He is the word of God that proceeded from the Father. You see that? And he came into the earth for one purpose, to give men life. The life that he came to give men is for men to receive his words. Of course, his words are the words of God. Jesus is not going to say anything the Father did not say. And Jesus is still speaking to us till this day. If you are, if you are obedient, if you open your ears to hear his voice, his word is going to come into your heart. And brothers and sisters, that word that is coming to you now, that word that is coming to you today, is the word that God has ordained to give you life. Praise God. Our time is up for today. It's going to be an exciting week. I know. I know. Let me just pray for you right now, Father. Whatever situation anyone watching me right now is facing, just like David said, he sent his word. So also you are sending your word to them right now. And that word is bringing a change, bringing a great deliverance in their life. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray that a miracle will take place in your life today. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, 
please do so now. God bless you. Bye.